Hey everyone, I'm Ryan Alice, and I'm doing a video on everything I've learned by 28. As part of part one about everything I've learned about life, I'm going to be talking today about networks. Networks are simply groupings of people, and often the networks you align yourself into have a tremendous effect on your ability to make a positive impact in the world or ability to achieve anything you set your mind to. I think that, in fact, who you surround yourself with is who you become. Building a large and valuable network is not something that can be done in a few weeks or even a year. It's something that takes time. I place a lot of importance on building my networks, both uh, in my area locally and uh, in my field globally. And I've carefully kept track of the people that I've met at least over the last 11 or 12 years since I started creating a system to keep track of the people in my life, both personally and professionally. And so the first lesson I'll share about networks and about people is something I've learned over the last few years, and that's to surround yourself with highly competent, very smart, and very positive people. There are plenty of smart and competent people out there that are simply negative people that don't have positive energy coming from them. And the problem with people with negative energy is that they discourage you and they tell you that you can't achieve your dreams. When in fact, as long as your motives are good and you're treating other people fairly and well, you can achieve anything you set your mind to. So step one is surround yourself only with smart, competent, and positive people. The second thing to look at is your friends. And who your friends are, in many ways, determines who you become. Sometimes one could even think about analyzing their current group of friends and seeing who in my current closest friend group, maybe of 25 or 30 people, do I think fits those criteria? Who is smart, who is competent, and who is positive? And something you might think about is beginning to spend more time with the people who are smart, competent, and positive, and less time with those people who you feel like are not encouraging you and advancing your growth. So don't be afraid to upgrade your friends. Oftentimes people are interacting with individuals who often are placed there randomly. And that's okay, and we can learn a lot from anyone. But be conscientious and be purposeful about the people you interact with frequently. And try to align yourself with people who are amazing, from whom you can learn, and who are positive people who will encourage you. Don't just let chance determine who's in your life. You should determine who's in your life. And so if you're only hanging out with smart, positive, compassionate, competent people, I think a lot more things are possible. That's certainly what I found. Life is just too short to keep negative influences in it. And so it could take years it might take five, maybe even ten years to completely switch up the people that are in your life on a day-to-day, week-to-week, month-to-month basis. It might even require you to move to another place eventually. And certainly if you're still living with your parents or are under 18, it might take until you become an adult to really have full control of who is in and not in your life. But it's absolutely worth it as a long-term investment in your ability to grow, the mentors in your life, and the ability to take in ideas. At the end of the day, the people around you are the people that are influencing you, and the people that are putting ideas, good or bad, into your head, the people that you're learning from. And so it's really important to get amazing people around you. And so if you don't live in what you consider to be an intellectual center, move as soon as you can. Now this is hard. It takes money to move. It takes time to move. It's a lot of effort to move. Oftentimes, it, there's a lot of cost. However, if you can move to a place, regardless of where you are in the world, where there are a lot of smart, caring, compassionate, competent, positive people, your life, I believe, will be better off for it. In terms of networks, let's do that exercise you we were talking about a minute ago. Let's actually take the time to write down the names of our top 30 friends, people that we spend the most time with. 
You can pause the video now, or you can do this on your own time later. But at some point, write down your top 30 friends. It should take you about 10 minutes to brainstorm. Then, once you're done, circle the names of the people you still want to be on that list in a year. Now this might seem harsh, but it's really important to be able to identify the people who build you up, who encourage you, and from whom you can learn. Once you've done that, focus your efforts and spend time with those people. Because to avoid being mediocre, you must seek out people who are not mediocre and hang out with them. Now, if that's your goal. Your educational network, let's talk about that. Your school is one of the most important networks you'll ever have, whether that's your high school, your college, your grad school. Your college and grad school in particular are critically important networks. And that's why, even though I only spent two years in undergrad, I found going to the University of North Carolina to be extremely transformational in terms of the people, the networks, and the ideas that I was supposed to. So if you can, or if you're too old, perhaps for your kids, ensure that you prepare yourself or that you prepare your kids well. And go yourself or get your kids into the absolute best schools possible. Now, you have to factor in the cost and the opportunity cost of attending those schools. But if you can get into a great network, whether it's now or in the future, it can be very helpful to your ability to get great jobs and achieve great things. Now, there are many examples of people who, without going to a top 30 school or without going to school at all, have done amazing things in life. So if you can't go to a full-time school um, or grad school, um, think about executive ed programs. Oftentimes, um, if you can save up the money and save up the funds, once you have some of your investments cash flowing, which we'll talk about in the section on finance, you can often, for a few thousand dollars, go to a two, three, four day program or even a couple week program at some of the top schools, top Ivy League schools in the United States and some of the top institutions around the world. And often that will get you an email address at those schools and often access into the alumni database, into the alumni network at those schools. And so it's not quite the same as a full-time program, but exec ed can be a great way to expand your network. And so knowledge is critical. So if you can't afford to go to the best schools, keep building the network anyway and still take the courses. There's this great new tool called Coursera that enables you to actually enroll for free in some of the top classes out there from, from institutions like the University of Pennsylvania, MIT, from Stanford, completely free of charge. Multi-week, semester-long classes. Definitely check out Coursera. Also check out Khan Academy, K-H-A-N where there are hundreds, if not thousands, of videos on every academic topic you can even imagine. And you can learn about everything from how to learn a new language to quantum physics. Khan Academy, Coursera, two great free resources using video to educate anyone, anywhere with access to the cloud. Now, after school, perhaps your next most important network is your work network. So choose the company you work for very carefully. Or, if you are entrepreneurial, build your own. One question I like to ask when I give chats, give talks, especially to younger people, is why do young people spend 16, 17 years in school, getting through kindergarten, through grad school sometimes, and then spend a few weeks trying to get a job, when in fact the job is the foundational element for what you're going to do with the rest of your life. Your career is often uh, takes a, nearly a third of your life. And so don't just send resumes out using the Career Services database. Actually spend time finding companies that are working on solving the world's greatest challenges, working on solving problems that you're passionate about. And if you are currently employed and you don't like your job, find an organization whose mission you are passionate about and do whatever it takes to get there. Even if it's showing up in the lobby and just simply waiting there until someone takes a meeting with you. Very few people have that type of determination and persistence. And at nine years at eye contact, no one ever showed up in the lobby insisting to have a meeting with me. But if they did and they, had wait, wait, and they waited there long enough and were friendly toward the receptionist and my executive assistant, Michelle, I definitely would have taken a meeting with them because I would have been impressed by their persistence. Do whatever it takes. 
and only go to work for a company if you deeply believe the change they're trying to make in the world. Too many companies these days, too many companies over the last 30 years have been focused on the short-term maximization of profits and a blind focus on only pursuing short-term shareholder return. And in fact, what a company should focus on is long-term value creation, which actually corresponds very well with shareholder return, but actually focuses on creating value not just for the owners of the capital stock, but for the community, for customers, for employees, and for shareholders. So never take a job unless you're working for someone directly of high integrity from whom you can learn a lot. Oftentimes you'll take a job because it's the first one offered to you after blasting out your resume. Don't do that. Consciously, carefully, over the course of months, maybe years, build your network, find companies pursuing things you are passionate about, and build relationships with individuals of high integrity who are 10 or 15 years ahead of you. Now, if you're a young person and watching this, say 15 to 35, here are some networks you can either currently or soon get involved with that you may want to look into in terms of expanding beyond your work and educational networks. These are some networks I've either been part of or uh, tried to be part of but got turned down from over the past 10 or 11 years and networks I hope to be part of in the future. And if you're passionate, if you're young, if you're caring, check these organizations out. So we'll go in order. Listed alphabetically, the Aspen Institute, they have a fellows program, uh, both in Washington, D.C., as well as Aspen, Colorado, where young political leaders, young individuals wanting to make a difference in the world can often participate. And they have a series of intellectual uh, events that are brought together in their major locations that you can be part of. The Impact 100 is a listing of the top 100 companies run by individuals under 30. And they come up with an annual list now. And it's actually, they kind of pull together quite a networking event uh, as they come out with their annual list. Entrepreneurs Organization is an organization for people under 40 who run their own business with at least a million dollars in sales. It was started in the mid 80s um, by an individual who realized the importance of creating what's called a forum, a closely held confidential group of six to ten people who would meet monthly for three to four hours to talk about not only the challenges they were facing with their business, with peers who could understand them, but challenges they were faced with personally with peers who could understand them because as an entrepreneur you often go through many things that other people simply don't go through. So if you're an entrepreneur, uh, if you have a company more than a million in sales or intend to in the future, check out EO, Entrepreneurs Organization. Other networks include Fortune Magazine's annual innovation conference, which they call Brainstorm, the Cairo Society, which is an organization of people in high school and college, of the, uh, future leaders, basically, that come together, uh, that have Facebook groups, that have networking events, people that want to make a difference in the world. Similar organization um, for very smart or uh, individuals who are deeply passionate, um, who are, say, under 25, is the Nexus Youth Summit, and that's held annually, usually in New York City, bringing together a few hundred of the heirs of philanthropic capital, of some of the most competent, passionate, smart individuals I've met. Other organizations that you should look into are Renaissance Weekend, Sandbox, Singularity University. Renaissance Weekend was started in the 80s by Phil and Linda Later. Phil was an ambassador um, under uh, Reagan. And they started this organization to bring together future political leaders. And um, now they have thousands of individuals that are part of this Renaissance Weekend network, ranging in age from 15 all the way up to 75 or even older. Sandbox is a network of innovators and technologists, generally under the age of 30. Um, they have, uh, they, I think they have uh, organizations all over Europe, here on the West Coast, in New York City, all over the East Coast of the United States, and some of the most impressive, young, motivated people I've found are part of the Sandbox organization. The Singularity is a university here down in Mountain View, California, that talks about using exponential technologies to improve the world and address some of the greatest challenges that our species faces in the decades and centuries to come. I attended the four-day executive education program at Singularity University back in April 2012, and that was where I came up with the idea for Connect during day two, during a lecture on neuroscience, strangely enough. Singularity University, they ha also have a graduate studies program for 10 weeks each summer in Mountain View. That if you're, say, between 21 and 35, 
and are passionate about using technology, science, and innovation to make a difference, check them out. They're often the ones talking about synthetic biology and time machines and uh, artificial wombs and some very interesting topics. A few other key networks to look at are the Skoll World Forum, Social Capital Markets, and Social Venture Network. Uh, the Skoll organization was founded by Jeffrey Skoll, who was the president of eBay uh, with Pierre Omidyar back in the late 90s before Meg, Whit Meg Whitman took over. And they took their wealth and founded some great organizations. Pierre founded Omidyar Networks, one of the greatest uh, funders of philanthropic and social enterprises. And Jeffrey took his funds and created the Skoll World Forum and uh, the Skoll Scholars Program at Oxford University in Oxford, England. And they have this annual conference in Oxford which brings together hundreds of the leading social entrepreneurs, passionate, competent people from the business sector and philanthropic and NGO and foundation sectors who want to make a difference in the world. So if you fit that criteria, definitely check it out. Social Capital Markets, commonly referred to as SOCAP, has an annual conference in San Francisco every October. And they bring together amazing people who are passionate about using finance, using capital, using business, and using efficiently run NGOs to make a difference in the world. And then finally, Social Venture Network is a group of angel investors who like to align with mission-driven capital. They like to invest their money in ways that makes a tangible, measurable impact in the world. There's also Starting Block, which is a group that's about six years old now, based originally out of DC, that brings together an annual group of 20 to 30 year olds uh, in Los Angeles, New York City, and Boston for a series of four day institutes where they do a case study methodology like managerial consulting to apply their knowledge and brains to some real companies' problems, particularly in the realm of sustainability. Summit Series is an organization of entrepreneurs, a lot in the tech entrepreneur and social entrepreneur space, mostly people under 40, who have achieved something of significance, either built a company to more than a million dollars in sales, or built an impressive and successful social venture. Um, they're now uh, at their headquarters in Eden, Utah, near uh, Park City, and definitely check into the Summit Series organization. Techstars is one of the best known incubators of technology ventures, and it's just like Y Combinator here in Mountain View. Uh, that we'll talk about in a moment, Techstars is based out of Denver, Colorado. Uh, TED is an organization many of you have probably heard about. They do the TEDx events, which are now in hundreds of cities around the world. They do TED, they do TED Global. Um, and their annual conference in Monterey or Long Beach, California, uh, usually in the uh, late winter, early spring, um, brings together some of the best thinkers in technology, entertainment, and design to talk about the ideas that shape humanity and will shape the future of the world. The Unreasonable Institute is based in Boulder, Colorado, and they're now in their, going into their fourth year, and they've brought together some of the leading social innovators from around the world, from dozens of countries, together for a multi-month program each summer to come together with mentors, with angel investors, to refine their pitches and plans, and ultimately turn into fundable companies that they can go back to their home countries and build. So some are Americans, but many are from around the world. And the World Economic Forum Young Global Leaders Program is a program I spoke about earlier because it was on my vision board. And it's a program that brings together uh, individuals under 40 who want to make a difference in the world and have achieved some notoriety in business or politics or, or the arts. The last four I'll mention is part of these key networks to look into and to get involved with in the years and decades ahead are the White House Fellows Program, which is a highly competitive program in DC where you get to work in the White House at a rather senior level, um, assisting some of the leading public servants of our time. And you learn a lot. It's definitely a program to look into if you're interested in politics or public service. Like Combinator is probably the top incubator um, program for technology companies uh, here in California, uh, really around the world. Um, the Young Entrepreneur Council is an organization founded by Scott Gerber that brings together hundreds of the best entrepreneurs under, say, 35, many of whom run companies with hundreds of thousands of dollars and millions of dollars in sales. Definitely check out the YEC. 
And then the Young Presidents Organization is the organization you graduate into after uh, being part of Entrepreneurs Organization, which used to be called Young Entrepreneurs Organization. YPO is for individuals under 50 who run companies uh, with more than, say, around $10 million in revenue or more than 50 employees. And the criteria change a little bit based on your industry. YPO is for both entrepreneurs who have started their own companies and built them into being more than 50 employees or for presidents or chairmen of companies who have taken over after the original founder or entrepreneur has left and moved on. These are some of the key networks to look into. And as I've said earlier in this presentation, networks are important, people are critical, and networks are where you find people. Networking is not about handing out a business card. It's about building authentic relationships with people and finding ways which in, you can help them. And if you can find ways to help people who are going out there and making a difference in the world, you will find your ability to make a difference in the world greatly amplified. Thank you for watching this video about networks.